Now let's go ahead and take a look at the big trade question that we have for this particular chapter. Here we're going to compare two different countries. We have Haiti on the left-hand side, and we have the Dominican Republic on the right-hand side. And each of these countries can produce two particular goods. We have coffee on the on the vertical axis, and we have cocoa on the horizontal axis. And we have the, P the PPS, or the production possibilities frontier, for each of these countries. So given the amount of resources or factors of production that each country has, they have the, these respective PPFs. Remember that on the PPF, this is where the country would be like to operating at because they are seen as production efficient. Here, the maximum amount of coffee Haiti can produce is 20 tons, and the maximum amount of co cocoa they can produce is 16 tons if they devote all of their resources towards each one of these goods. The Dominican Republic has 40 tons and 20 tons of cocoa with, this, with the same sort of idea. So by taking a look at these two countries' PPFs, we can go ahead and introduce the idea of absolute advantage and comparative advantage and see who should be specializing in each of these particular goods. So first of all, can we tell who has the absolute advantage in coffee and who has the absolute advantage in cocoa? And this is going to be the easy one for us to answer because remember that with absolute advantage, all we really care about is the absolute value of the number. So here with Haiti, they can produce a maximum of 20 units or 20 tons of coffee, while the Dominican Republic can produce a maximum of 40 tons of coffee. So who has the absolute advantage there? It's going to be the Dominican Republic. So the Dominican Republic has the absolute advantage in coffee production because 40 is bigger than 20. And the same thing, who has that absolute advantage in cocoa production? Here, we have 20 tons for the Dominican Republic. We have 16 tons for Haiti. So therefore, the Dominican Republic, once again, has the absolute advantage in cocoa production because 20 is bigger than 16. So the Dominican Republic has the absolute advantage in both of these goods, in coffee and cocoa. But does this mean that the Dominican Republic should be producing each of these goods or both of these goods? And the answer is no. We have to focus in on the comparative advantage to see what each country should be producing. And that's where the opportunity the cost calculation is going to come into play. And a very easy way for us to build up an opportunity cost or to see who has a comparative advantage is to go ahead and build up an opportunity cost table. And we're going to easily transform this graph right here into an opportunity cost table, which is going to be a little bit more simple for us to work with and easier for us to sort of see what is happening with all of this. So let's go ahead and do that. Here, let's go ahead and build up the table. We have these two countries. We have Haiti. Haiti, and then we also have the Dominican Republic. So here, uh, I'll make this a little bit better. So we'll have the Dominican Republic. We have DR right here. So shorthand for Dominican Republic. And we want to build up our opportunity cost table. So first step, all we want to do is go ahead and transform the two graphs that we saw into one simple table. We have the two countries, and then we have the two goods. We have coffee, and then we have cocoa. Cocoa. So it's sort of traditional for us to put the... Uh, countries or people on the left hand side while the goods we take a look at are going to be on the top half of this table and then in here all we want to do is insert the number or the maximum amount of each of these goods these countries can produce into this table right here and if we go ahead and take a look at the graph we just go ahead and take the numbers that are being provided to us so the numbers on the axes are the easiest things to go ahead and substitute into our table right here so 20 and 16 40 and 20 and once again you always want to go ahead and be using the numbers that are being provided to you you don't want to go ahead and use the numbers that are inside or on the ppf right here or right here you can, but it will lead you to a very, very complex analysis, and you don't want that. So the easiest numbers are to go ahead and take the numbers that you see here on the axes. The point C and A right here, that's not going to come into play just as of yet. We're going to introduce the points A and C when we talk about the sort of advantages of trade and specialization. So don't really worry about those two points. Here, all we want to go ahead and take a look are the numbers that we see on the axes and insert them into our table. So here we have 20. For Haiti, for coffee, 16 for cocoa, and then 40 and 20. So essentially all we've done is transform that, those two graphs with a lot of information, a lot of extraneous information into a table which provides us with the same information. Haiti, if they devote all their resources to making coffee, they can make 20 tons. If they devote all their resources to making cocoa, they can make 16 tons. Same thing with the Dominican Republic, a maximum of 40 tons of coffee or a maximum of 20 tons of cocoa. The next step that we want to go ahead and do is transform this production table into an opportunity cost table. So now we can go ahead and see exactly where the opportunity cost calculations are going to come into play. 
So here we transform this production table. We go ahead and say opportunity cost of coffee. And then we also have the opportunity cost of opportunity cost of cocoa. Cocoa. And this is where the formula that we introduced in this particular chapter does come in handy once again. So in order to find the opportunity cost of coffee, we need to see how much cocoa we give up and divide it by how much coffee we gain. Remember, the opportunity cost of coffee is always going to be set in terms of cocoa and vice versa. Opportunity cost of good A set in terms of good B. So in terms of the opportunity cost of coffee, how much cocoa do we give up? We give up 16 times. So with this, you immediately always want to throw the other number on top first. You want to stay consistent with your methodology here. So cocoa right here. So 16 cocoa on top. And what do we gain by producing coffee? We gain 20 coffee. So keep that same good in the denominator. Remember, the opportunity cost of the denominator good is exactly what we're trying to find right here. And then if we want to find the opportunity cost of cocoa, we just do the opposite. We throw coffee on top first, keep cocoa on the denominator, on the bottom right here. So here, 20 coffee over 16 cocoa. Cocoa. And this will do the opportunity cost of coffee and cocoa for Haiti, since we're reading this across. Then we want to go ahead and do the same exact steps for the Dominican Republic. So this is going to be 20 cocoa. And you keep the same good on the bottom. You have 40 coffee in the denominator. And then finally here, you want to go ahead and find the opportunity cost of cocoa. That's where you throw coffee on top first, so 40 coffee. And then throw the same exact good on the bottom, you have 20 cocoa. And this is exactly how we built up our opportunity cost table. The final step is to go ahead and simplify everything that we have here down to its simplest forms. So here we'll build up our final opportunity cost table. We have Haiti, we have the Dominican Republic, and then we want to just transform this into the opportunity cost of coffee. And then finally here we have the opportunity cost of cocoa. So once you go ahead, take out your calculators, divide all these through. If you can't do it in your head, that's perfectly fine. So 16 divided by 20, this will give us 0 0.8. 20 divided by 16, this will give us 1.25. 20 divided by 40 will give us a half, 0 0.5. And then 40 divided by 20 will give us 2. So with all of this, we have successfully transformed our production table into an opportunity cost table. And this will tell us exactly who should be specializing in what particular good. Remember, we want to go ahead and focus in on the lower the opportunity cost. You have the comparative advantage in producing that good. So these numbers are very important for us because they provide us with some type of interpretation as well. So suppose that we take a look at the opportunity cost of coffee first. So here, just going ahead, taking a look at this column right here. Haiti has an opportunity cost of coffee of 0 0.8, while the Dominican Republic has an opportunity cost, cost of coffee of 0 0.5. So remember the interpretation. In order for us to produce one additional cup of coffee, Haiti has to give up on the production of 0 0.8 cocoa. In order for the Dominican Republic to produce one additional cup of coffee, they have to go ahead and give up on the production of 0 0.5 uh, cocoa. So with this in mind, who has the comparative advantage in making coffee? In this case, it would be the Dominican Republic. So you put a little bit of check mark right there because the lower the opportunity cost, that's where you have the comparative advantage and that is the good you should be specializing in. Essentially, the Dominican Republic is giving up fewer cocoa in order to produce more coffee. So therefore, they should be the ones that produce coffee. You do not want to confuse this with coffee and cocoa because that will lead you to the wrong interpretations and answers. So here you want to go ahead and focus in on the lower number here and the Dominican Republic is giving up fewer cocoa in order to produce more coffee. And then we do the same steps in terms of cocoa. In order for Haiti to produce one additional cocoa, they have to give up on the production of 1.25 coffee. For the Dominican Republic, in order for them to produce one additional cocoa, they give up on two cups of coffee. So once again, using the same reasoning, Haiti has the opportunity cost in producing cocoa because they have the lower opportunity cost. They have the comparative advantage in producing cocoa. They should be exporting cocoa out. They should be specializing in the production of cocoa. So therefore, we have, we put a check mark right there. 
And this is essentially how you tackle the vast majority of opportunity of trade questions, comparative advantage uh, trade questions. It's easiest to go ahead and build up the table that you see right here. You have a production table, use the formula, what you give up over what you gain, our opportunity cost formula, and then easily transform it into the numbers that you see right here. Remember, we want to focus in on the lower numbers with these columns right here. And we want to go ahead and say that if you have the lower opportunity cost, you do have the comparative advantage, you should be specializing or exporting that good out. And we'll do a few more examples of this uh, just to get a little bit more practice because this is pretty much the big portion of this particular chapter, building up these production tables and finding out who has the absolute advantage and comparative advantage. Remember though, however, that Comparative advantage and absolute advantage do mean two very different things. In order for us to see who should be specializing in what good, we need to focus in on the comparative advantage, focusing in on the opportunity cost. The absolute advantage, while nice for us to take a look at, it doesn't ma really matter for trade at all. And the next few slides pretty much just detail what we did on, uh, on the notes right there. So the Dominican Republic, in order for them to produce uh, so to, to, to decide who should produce what, compare the opportunity cost of producing one ton of coffee in each of these particular nations. So here, the opportunity cost of producing coffee is 0.5 tons of cocoa for the Dominican Republic. It's 0.8 ton of cocoa for Haiti. So therefore, the Dominican Republic should be producing coffee. So the Dominican Republic, once again, has a lower opportunity cost of producing coffee than Haiti. Therefore, it has the comparative advantage. On the other hand, if we want to find the opportunity cost of cocoa, we do the same exact steps. Here, the Dominican Republic, their opportunity cost is two tons of coffee. Haiti is 1.25 tons of coffee. So therefore, Haiti is the one that should be specializing in making cocoa. So remember, opportunity costs are always going to be set in terms of the other good, and we want to choose the lower number between these two uh, countries. And then finally here, just to end this particular section, using the co concept of comparative advantage, explain why many factories have closed in the United States in recent, st in recent decades. Pretty much, we focus in on the idea of comparative advantage once again. So here in the United States, it doesn't really have a comparative advantage in a lot of manufacturing sort of sectors anymore. They're more than willing to let go of this sort of industry to focus in on the good that they are more proficient at sort of producing. So things like technological goods, car manufacturing, that type of idea. So they're more than willing to say, hey, if we try to focus more in on manufacturing, then on these sort of manufacturings or these type of factories, we're gonna just gonna give up too many on the production of too many other goods. So therefore, it's not really worth it for us to do this type of job anymore in this instance. We should focus on what we are good at or proficient at. So once again, we hit on the key principle number three, once again, a little bit harder in this section. Specialization is going to be good for countries involved because we are focusing in on some type of positive sum type of game. And we'll focus in on a little bit more with specific numbers to showcase exactly why trade and specialization are going to be good for both of these countries in this example. So for Haiti and for the Dominican Republic, why should they why they should be specializing in each of the goods that they have a comparative advantage in?